unconventional and unusual compared to most peoples of that time and um, my father was from Kiev and he came over I suppose it must have been about 1944 uh, that period it could have been earlier I'm not absolutely sure and so my mother threw herself into this relationship which happened extremely quickly um, they met and they got married within six weeks um, and my mother didn't understand my father um, but they must have communicated in other ways <laughs> so um, we, we I think they decided that they would like to get away from London because I think London was quite a difficult place to live for an immigrant and so we moved to Suffolk and they they started a small holding and we had um, pigs and chickens and goats and um, it was hard work my mother complained because my father was really interested only in having fun and going out poaching and <clears throat> and giving singing evenings to his friends who'd come around to the house to listen to him and so life was perhaps a bit of a struggle for them. Um, we were kind of self-sufficient. I think you had to be in those times. Um, but they were disasters as, as farmers and um, they really didn't cope terribly well with it. So by the age of 14, um, we moved back to London. But I think the country, living in the country, actually prepared me for my future life, really. Playing with dirt, making mud pies with my sister, um, having snail races up walls, <laughs> all those sort of things, running around fields and um, living very close to the earth. and. I suppose that was very, very normal and natural in our lives in those times. <clears throat> so I found my old art school teacher when I was at secondary school and he told me what to do and he gave me um, he guided me in the right way and I went to the local art school and I I joined evening classes and I did life drawing and um, I remember oh gosh it was such a shock when I saw this model sort of sitting in the in the studio and everybody was busy drawing away and I sort of gasped you know because um, I suppose I just wasn't used to seeing somebody sitting there completely naked and uh, but anyway I got over that pretty quickly because there was nothing else going on <laughs> other than just drawing and I that I attended for a few weeks and it wasn't long the principal had noticed that I was coming in and he said, would you like to study here permanently? And of course I said, yes I would. And I brought my work to him on, on the following Monday and he said, well you can start now. And it was as simple as that. So I felt, I think now I was very, very lucky and it was very fortuitous, it's, you know, that it happened. And so I got into the art school. 
I I was given a, a grant, a major county award, that's what it was called, and um, I just had this wonderful time there for four years, just it, finding out what I could do. Drawing, painting, etching, fantastic. I just loved it. And of course, I was being a rebellious young person at that time as well. And um, it was just great fun. I mean, growing up in the 60s was the beginning of lots and lots of things. And there was a lot of freedom to express yourself in lots of different ways. So that's where it all started. And then when I finished my studies, I did, um, I actually got a few evening class teaching jobs. And, um, and that was great fun as well. I really enjoyed it because when you know what you're doing, it's not difficult. And, um, you know, it's, you, you, you understand the fact that people do want to be creative and um, you just help them follow their kind of dreams as well and enjoyment because that's what art is all about it's very enjoyable and it makes you feel good having a change really and having a bit of colour in my life and stained glass is, is the best form of colour because it's the light, the light and the reflection. So I had a few lessons from a friend of mine and I decided I would work on the story of Persephone and Demeter and um, because I think it's, um, it's really the whole story of how our universe kind of works, you know, the seeding and um, and the abduction of Persephone into the underworld and the darkness. So you've got the seasons, um, pro, what's the word, procreation, and um, and how important it was. It was a symbol that was worshipped practically worldwide. She was honoured and um, it just showed the good and evil of man's creation and she um, had so much power over that and of course now we're messing the, the world up so much that we're even going to lose that um, <clears throat> symbolic sense of, of being able to celebrate the uh, creation of the seasons and how important they are. So um, I enjoyed doing that for a little bit but I found um, working with stained glass you have to use lead and that was extremely difficult for me. I, I could taste it and you know it's a dangerous material so I stopped doing it. But it was great fun and I still love it and I wish there was a, a, a way out around the lead soldering. I suppose it's a complicated, um, well not complicated, but it's it's something that I don't quite understand. I always, when I was really young, I always loved Indian music and I don't actually know where that came from. It hit something inside me and, and I've constantly felt incredibly emotional when I listened to it. And um, when I got an opportunity to go to India, 
um, I knew that that was there was a relationship there that I actually couldn't really comprehend. I didn't understand why. Maybe people talk about past lives. Maybe it, maybe that was something that happened to me. Um, but I know that it affects other people in a very similar way. <clears throat> you know, as soon as we share our experiences with our journeys in that country, we want to cry. And I can't really understand why that is. There is tremendous, immense beauty there which has been created by by the people that live there over centuries and it has such an ancientness which still lives on. I'm not saying it's all good things, I mean some of them things seem terribly drastic and cruel but um, there's a lot there which is incredibly stimulating. There's um, I, you see, even now, I, I find it quite difficult to express um, exactly what it is. I feel when I go there that I've come home as well. I mean, you could say I feel the same way about Ireland, in a way, but not in that way. Um, there's colour there, there's fantastic kind of spontaneity. Um, Indian people are incredibly humorous. Um, there's a lot of fun there. Um, and the spiritualness is, is such a natural thing. And, and it's not precious. And their creative endeavors are created really because they need those things in their lives. And they create what they need very often. and. And it all comes, it's practical and um, they're very inventive um, and there's nothing precious about it. It's not over special, it's just a necessity of daily life and, and it's allowed to be spontaneous. It isn't controlled, it just happens. People are um, inventive and it's very, very enjoyable. And I like that. I like that freedom um, and the surprises of things. And there's a lot of humanity there. People just um, express themselves in the way they feel. And it it's, comes out all the time. So, and then there's the music, which is just absolutely takes you into a different it hits something in you very deeply well that's how it affects me and um, I love it I love Qualis music it's like calling on something which has been lost for a lot of us it just pulls at you and you know it exists that different level of awareness. That's India. young you're you just go for things an idea that somebody can put in your mind can be very stimulating and I had a few friends that came from Ireland and uh, you know they just they would express they would say it's a beautiful country and um, why don't you go there and see if you'd like to go and live there? So we decided, me and my partner at the time, um, we would we would do that. So we actually left our jobs 
and we packed everything into an old van that we bought and away we came over to Ireland to uh, I think we landed in um, Wicklow and we knew somebody there and they put us up for a little bit and Ireland was very interesting at that time of, you know this that time of the century century would you say century decade I don't know but anyway you can deal with that <laughs> Ireland was, um, you know, also had its kind of developing creative side to it and it was in very, very early stages and um, we, we met um, artists and we met poets and um, lots of things were going on. People were, were incredibly enthusiastic by, for developing that side of that creative side of the country and um, so we we decided we better go and have a look and see what was going on in the rest of the country so we thought we would go and visit potters but there wasn't very many potters um, there was one or two sort of dotted all over the country but very very few and we had very little money so that we ended up in West Cork that's how I really came to, to be here and um, there was a German lady here and she was making pots. She was digging her clay out of a field in Bandon and bringing it over to her, to Balladier Hob in a tractor and trailer, which was amazing. But it all seemed very, very normal and natural in those times because there were a lot of trailers and tractors and farmers and, you know, so the whole kind of um, natural earthiness of it seemed to be quite appropriate. That's how you did it. And so we decided after um, staying in her house that we would like to settle. So we rented a farmhouse and we um, ordered a kiln. I think we got a grant for our kiln, which was wonderful. Um, but unfortunately the kiln was made of very very heavy material and when they delivered it off the boat from Cork they dropped it so it was all in pieces but they still delivered it to us <laughs> so we were incredibly upset and disappointed by this and it was the beginnings of the troubles in the north and so people in England didn't really understand that it was the north of Ireland that had its problems and not the south of Ireland. So they wouldn't send anybody over to repair it. So we had to, we had to somehow send it back to Stoke-on-Trent and they repaired it and they eventually sent it back to us and it was okay. And then also we had to we had to order all our materials from Britain and they because the materials came from different parts of the world we had to get a certificate of origin for each separate material. It was very very long winded the whole process, but uh, and it would very often be held by the customs and we had to go to Cork and you know sort all that side of things out. So um, that was the beginning of us trying to set up something like a pottery and um, of course we couldn't go and dig our clay out of the field, we wanted clay that was more suitable for what we wanted to make and so the beginnings, that was the beginnings and we made, of course Ireland relied on, on tourism a great deal um, and so there were lots of little craft shops springing up all over the place and what they wanted was pottery so we made kind of we did our best we made saleable objects and um, sold them to craft to craft shops and that was really how we started here yeah I, I have been here for a very very long time now, 50 years in fact, so uh, I suppose I feel a lot of harmony here and it's as good a place to live as anywhere really. 
there's a little bit too much rain <laughs> but what what can you do um, I don't think I'll ever go and live anywhere else I think this is probably where I'll end my days and I like living in the community I like the feeling that people acknowledge you and recognize you and know what they know about you and I feel that well I, I hope I think I'm just part of the community as well like everybody else and um, I'm glad that I have my my pottery I still make a little bit of it and it's developed enough for me to feel that I'm not I'm I am still developing myself but the basic um, idea of of being an individual has gone along with my own personal development and my own philosophy of life I think and that's um, very much part of of how it's developed I think um, there's a certainty about what I think I'm doing and I'm quite happy about that and it, every year I can see that my my work has changes in a little bit and some other kind of um, technique has has crept in without my knowing almost and um, and I like that. I think that my observations of what I'm doing has become sharper and it's not about perfection really. It's 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 a sort of adventure. You you kind of dig around in yourself. You don't know what's there. There's an awful lot inside that has to come out and it's a mystery, isn't it? Where it comes from. I don't know how to explain that. But I'm doing it as best I know and and I expect I'll continue to do it as long as I can lift because I say lift because materials for pottery work is quite heavy and there's quite a lot of physical work involved in it and I am getting older but I'll never stop drawing and I'll never stop doing something. Is that right? Oh.